We're so excited to have you guys join us this morning on behalf of Bishop and Lady Mixon. We're so excited to have you. So let me tell you guys what we have for you guys today and how you can stay connected. You can reach us on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube. Join a watch party, gather up your family, call your friends, let them know that we have an amazing Sunday in store for you guys. So let's get ready for a moment of prayer. Father God, we just thank you for this day, Father God. We thank you for the day that you have made, for we will rejoice and be glad in it, Father God. We just thank you for your word, Father God, for it is a lamp to our feet, our feet and a light to our path, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for watching over us. We thank you for leading and guiding us, Father God. We thank you, Father God. Father God, that when we get on a crooked path, that you make things straight for us. We thank you that all things from you are good, Father God, and that with you that we lack in nothing, Father God, that with you all things are possible, Father God, for when we are weak, you make us strong, Father God, and we just thank you and we honor you and we bless you, Father God. So we thank you for the word that is about to come forth on this morning, Father God. We thank you, Father God, that it is going to bring deliverance, Father God. We thank you, Father God, that it's going to bring restoration, Father God. We thank you, Father God, that it's going to bring your people home, Father God, and that they are going to know that you are our Lord and Savior. And it's in your son, Jesus Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Say hallelujah, hallelujah, say hallelujah. 
We thank you, God, that you won't stop chasing us. <laughs> we thank you, God, that you continue to run for us, God. So we decide to stretch forth our hands to you, Father, in this moment of worship. <laughs> We make a decision to stretch forth, God, and reach out our hands to you, Father, because as we reach for you, you're reaching back for us today, God. So we thank you. We give you glory that you're coming after me. Come on, let's give God a great big hand of praise out there. Give God some thumbs, some hearts, some likes. Listen, take just a moment and hit that like button, that share button. Gather your family and your friends in today. Listen, we've got a special, special treat today. One of our very own daughters of this house, uh, Elder Demetria Richburg, is going to come and deliver a powerful word of God. So I want you to lock in, grab your note-taking device, grab your praise. It is about to be off the chain. I can't wait to hear what God has put in her heart to deliver uh, to us today. So let's prepare to receive Elder Demetria Richburg as she comes forth. Lord, family and friends, we are so excited to have you guys joining us today for our live stream service. Um, it's such a privilege to be able to share the word of God with you today as I stand on behalf of um, Bishop Mixon um, today in his absence. I thank God for this great opportunity um, to share his word with his people. We're going to get ready to go before the Lord in a word of prayer. Dear Father, we thank you so much for this day, God. We pray today that your spirit would increase today, that your glory would land and rest upon us today, Father. Lord, I pray today that the words of my mouth, God, and that the meditations of my heart, God, that they would be acceptable in your sight today, Father, for you are my strength, God, and you are my redeemer. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. We'll be going to Genesis um, chapter 12, and we'll be reading verses 1, and then we'll be jumping to verse 4. I'll be reading from the Amplified Version. Now the Lord had said to Abram, Go away from your country and from your relatives and from your father's home to the land which I will show you and drop down to verse 4 so Abram departed in faithful obedience as the Lord had directed him and Lot his nephew left with him Abram was 75 years old when he left Haran so today um, Bishop Mixon started a sermon last week um, we were talking about our journey of faith, the faith journey and the, the faith walk and how we as believers have been called um, not just to walk but to live and that is a life of faith. Um, so today I want to talk a little bit um, from the subject from destinations to destiny. And a few things that I um, want to share is In order for us to perceive the journey through the collect lens, through the correct lens, we first have to understand how our God works. He's a prepared God. Isaiah 46 and 10 says that he declares the end and the result from the beginning. And from ancient times, the things which haven't happened yet, he's already declared. We come into what has previously existed. God does not need time to create our expected end and delay is never because God isn't prepared. God isn't creating spaces and places as we go along. He's not adapting to our plan, but his plans have already been settled in the earth. And as I was studying this, uh, the spirit of the Lord began to reveal to me how faith 
um, faith is the currency uh, of the believer and how faith is needed and intended for our journey. This is why we've all been given a measure of it. And that measure of faith that God has given to us is in proportion to what he's destined for our lives. When I looked up the definition of the word currency, it was circulation as a medium of exchange. And when I hear that definition, one of the words that sticks out to me is the word medium. And I believe that it's our faith that connects heaven and our earth's experiences. Faith is assurance of the outcome. It keeps us looking forward to something even when we don't see and it does not look like the description that we've been given. Without faith, what's intended to be a journey becomes just a bunch of little destinations because we walk by faith and not by sight. It's a progression. We go from glory to glory. It's within the journey that we find the exposure through experiences that we need to occupy our destiny. So when we don't embrace the journey of faith and the experiences that come along with it, it's difficult for us to inhabit our destiny because we've not been built to maintain the measure of blessing that's going to be in that land that's promised. When I was thinking about this, I thought about how um, the children uh, in Genesis and the children of Israel and God said that I, I could take them through this quick route. It, you know, I'm able to do that. But if I do it this way, war may break out and then I'll, I'll lose them. They'll forget who they are. But he said, I'm going to have to take them through a process. And it may take more than three or four days. But this process is going to be needed because if they go through the process, once they get to the place of promise, the place that was destined for them, they won't forget their God and they won't forget who I am. Destinations deal with the place, but destiny is a preordained outcome. When we talk about our destinies, we're talking about something that's fixed for our lives. It's something that God has already preordained. He's already predestined. The scripture says that those that he foreknew, he also predestined. And Jeremiah, the Lord says, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you and I appointed you. It's the relationship that we have with God that births uh, uh, specific situations and experiences that that help us to maintain and sustain our relationship with the loving father when we get to the blessing now when I talk about the uh, destiny and and the faith walk I'm relating destiny to the promises that God has given you how many of you have some promises that God has given you for your life and you've yet to see them you've you've yet to experience I'm talking about people who have a word but where you are don't look nothing like the word that the Lord has promised to you and it's right about about now at this point that you want to stop that you want to give up that you want to settle for the destination but I come to encourage you today as a prophet of God we have not been called to settle but we have been called to advance we have been called to move we have been called to go from glory to glory and God has dealt unto you a measure of faith that enables you to experience the best of God right here on earth somebody put your hands together and I want somebody to say I don't have to get to heaven to live my best life but today is my best life because God has a destiny that has been marked for me and I'm living in my promised land regardless of how bad it looks regardless of good days and bad days my destiny has already been predestined I've already been destined to win I've already been destined to be healed I've already been destined to overcome I've already been destined to breakthrough I've already been destined to prosper and to succeed before I got to this place before I got here God had already established what my life would look like on the earth we have got to have the faith to understand that we don't serve a father that works behind us but we serve a father who has already paved the way for us Adam and Eve were not set in the earth until God had a prepared place for them and what we need to understand is destiny has been prepared when they were set in the garden they had what they needed to eat they had what they needed to drink 
bring. They had a father to have relationship with. And the same promise that God gave them is good for us today. You may not be in a physical Eden, but there is a promised blessing for your life. If God has promised you that you'll be a millionaire in a couple of years, you better stand on that word. You better embrace the journey of budgeting. You better embrace the journey of getting your bank account together. You better embrace the journey of getting prepared, getting prepared because what God has for you, it is for you. And he's definitely not a man that he should lie. He is, it's, it's impossible for him to go back and change your destiny because you can't get there. It's impossible. All the places Jesus went was part of a purpose journey. You hear um, phrases like, I had need to go through Samaria, or he went through Bethany, and there were certain places that he went. He had to pass through. When we think about destinations, these are only places that we pass through. We pass through them, destinations. Uh, and, and if we're not careful, what can happen is we can become so distracted by the destinations that we give up on destiny because what it takes to get to destiny is faithful and patience endurance and a lot of times we miss the faithfulness and the faith filled obedience that's needed to walk out the journey that God has called us to the wilderness was never the destiny for the children of Israel but because of their lack of faith it calls a journey of exiting to become a destination that could not hold their purpose. Let me tell you today where you stop is not your end and it is incapable of holding your purpose. So um, dest uh, destinations aren't the purpose in itself but they work for our purpose. The scripture says and God will cause all things to work together for the good of them who love the Lord and who have been called according to purpose. It's when we experience the, the experiences of a destination destination that we see them working and aiding in us getting to where we have been called to be even with the promise they couldn't see themselves beyond beyond the place of Egypt every time Moses tried to get them to go somewhere or tried to get them to trust God they always referred back to Egypt nothing changed their mind and fear what fear did is is it brought them <sighs> It kept bringing up an experience that Egypt had given them. So when it was time to go into the destiny, because their faith would not allow them to be exposed to what God was trying to get them to, it caused them to become familiar and to stay comfortable in what they were used to. Faith comes by hearing. When we think about the promise, it does give us, uh, the, the word of God, what it does is it gives us exposure. Um, to the possibilities of what God can do. Even though we haven't experienced it, physically experienced it yet, when we think about some of the things that we have gone through in life and then the thing that we know that God has called us to do, you have the right personality and the right experiences that help to make that destiny a better place for those who are with you. Destination, a couple of de uh, definitions. Destination is a place to which one is journeying or to which something is sent. When we look at the word destiny, it's something that has already happened. Destiny has happened for us even before we arrive. Romans 8 and 29 says, for those whom he knew, he also predestined. And when we think about some examples of that, of, of destiny versus destination, we think about Jesus and his journey here on earth. Earth was just a destination, which is why he couldn't stay long. He had to pass through. He had to do and receive from earth and do in earth what he was called to do but then we see him going on into the tomb the tomb was not his destiny but it was a destination but it was when he rose from the dead that we see the destiny of our messiah being filled our messiah being filled where he now sits at the right hand of god the father where he now has the name that is above all names and at that name every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess destinations will be experienced experiences of the journey but they are never intended to be the end oftentimes with destinations we will have grace periods this is what i thought was good joshua 5 and 6 and deuteronomy 1 and 2 
what should have been an 11 day journey for the children of Israel to get through the wilderness. It took them four years of literally wandering. And I don't, when I say wandering, I'm not just talking about going in circle, but I'm talking about literally in their minds, wondering what's next, wondering if I'm going to get past this past this place wondering if going back to Egypt would be a better result they could not hold on to the promise because they had settled for what was a destination Jesus said uh, destroy this temple and in what three days I'll raise it back up they was mad at Jesus but they didn't understand that earth was just a destination it was not the destiny of our Christ what keeps us hopeful throughout the journey is knowing that destinations are not the end when they are occupied within the period of grace for occupancy then they serve an imp important purpose to support and sustain us when we get in into the fulfilled promise. It was the relationship. The, the uh, uh, wilderness was all about the relationship. It was about the relationship. It was about God trying to get his chosen people to know who he was. Think about the experiences that they had in, in the wilderness. He fed them manna. Uh, he, he Water from the rock. I'm talking about eating quail. It was all type miracles that Jesus performed for them not to prove himself to himself, but to prove himself to them that I am God I change it not I am your I am I'm your sustainer I am your provider I'm your ever-present help in the time of trouble he just wanted to get them to know simply who he was because he understood that if you don't know who I am right here in this place I'm almost certain that when you get into the promise, you won't know who I am. You won't be able to maintain your place of worship. You won't be able to maintain your prayer life. It's through everyday life experiences that we build the stamina that's needed to last in this, this uh, walk of faith that we're walking. It's in those everyday experiences that we gain the wisdom that we needed to live our best life. It's in those everyday experiences, those days destinations that we're pruned and prepared for the place that we are going when we think about this it it's all so amazing at how Jesus just sets our lives up for us I mean it's it's just the word the scripture tells us that the word was in the beginning it, it was already there even before I got there and what makes the journey of faith I don't want to use the word easy but what makes the journey light what makes it light is knowing that I'm not living a a, 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 a life that's not already ordered I'm not living a life that has not already been designed and finished and created, but I'm living a life that God has completed in me before I even got there. And we embrace the journey of faith by saying, I know that I'm in this place now, but my faith has exposed me to something that I have not yet seen yet, and I'm not going to stop until I get there. It's that I'm not going to stop mentality that keeps us persevering when things get hard, it was that I'm not going to stop mentality that when they told Jesus, you, you're the Christ, get yourself down off that cross. Jesus says, no, I understand that I got a greater destiny and I'm not coming down off this cross. Yeah, I can save myself, but I'm not going to save myself because saving myself is not my destiny, but saving you is my destiny. So I understand that I've got to suffer on this cross. I've got to be buried and I've got to get up and sit where I'm supposed to sit so that you can have life and have life more abundantly and when we embrace the truth of what Jesus Christ done for us the day that he got up don't just know him in his journey on this earth but the scripture says to know him in the power of his resurrection and we've got to know that with every destiny destination there may be a stop there may be a moment to break there may be a moment to rest but we have got to get back up we have have got to keep moving we have got to keep advancing we've got to keep preparing we've got to keep going we've got to keep believing because what's on the other side of where you are is so much greater it's so much greater and life life can hit us really hard sometimes and 
because of the weight of the pain that we experience I don't know if y'all ever experienced any pain it just kind of made you paralyzed it just it kind of stopped this place is so bad I don't even have the breath to go on I don't even have the endurance that I need to keep going I don't I don't have the joy that I need to smile today I, I don't have the patience that I need to be a mama today I don't have the resources I need to help my husband today I'm talking about things get hard and it, it gets deathly hard sometimes but when we have a promise and we know, we know that we've been predestined. This don't look like what God said, so I know this ain't the end for me. This reminds me nothing about what God has said about my life. So I know, I know, I know I can't stop now. We're wasting provision every time you give up. You're wasting provision. You're wasting possibilities. You're wasting all that good stuff, all that treasure in the earth and vessels that God has given you. It's like you take all that stuff and hide it because I don't want to keep going. The scripture says the race is not given to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, but to the one who endures for, to the end. And we're running with an end in mind. We're running with an end in mind. We've been predestined. Things have been set in place for us. And if, if God has said that to you, if God, is, if God has promised you that you're going to be healed, you don't stop till you get your healing. If God has promised to restore your marriage, you don't stop till you and your husband are on one accord. If God has promised to bring you out of debt, you don't stop until you're debt free. The scripture says Jesus told them the only work that I need you to do is to believe that's it the only work that we have to do is to believe so you mean you mean to tell me Demetri even when, when when I can't seem to put things together all I gotta do is believe all you got to do is believe belief connects faith connects your now to your future and it enables you to experience the best of heaven right here on earth. Right here on earth. It's your currency. It's the exchange that you give. We give faith and God gives supply. God gives resources. God gives answers if we only believe. Just take a moment and look and, and just think about your life. And Have you stopped? Have you stopped? Stop at what seems to be impossible for you. Has God promised you something greater, but you can't seem to get out of your past and get your past out of you? This is what the journey of faith, this is what it's all about. We go from glory to glory. And God is with us every step of the way. His word says that he'll never leave us and that he'll never forsake us faith is for the journey it's needed for the journey so today keep going word of the Lord for you today is to keep going to keep pressing to keep moving regardless of your issue regardless of your circumstance regardless of your fears regardless of your failures the spirit of the Lord says keep moving keep moving keep moving for I hear a wind of acceleration that's going to move you going to cause you to accelerate beyond the places where you are comfortable you will not 
settle for places that you have not been designed for. You will not settle for status quo. You will not settle for what's beneath you. But I declare and I decree that your eyes will be open to see, to see the length and the breadth of the land that the Lord that God has given unto you. The land, your land that's flowing with milk and honey. I decree and I declare today that you will not stop but I prophesy a fresh endurance over your life in the name of Jesus. I declare and I decree that you will not stop thinking beyond your present need, but I speak to your future possibilities and I declare and I decree that it looks better than where you are now. I encourage your spirit man to stand where you are today and look out and as far as you can see, that's what you can have. I prophesy that you have even Eagle eyes during this faith journey. I prophesy a fresh hope during this uh, uh, this journey today. I prophesy that you don't need more faith, but you need to work your faith. For God has given you a measure of faith, and that measure of faith is in proportion to where you have got to go. Now I prophesy movement to your feet. I prophesy advancement to your feet in the name of Jesus. I declare that you will walk by faith and not by sight. I decree and I declare that you will please God because every day that you open up your eyes, you see potential, you see the future, you live future forward, says the Spirit of the Lord. You live pressing toward the mark for the prize of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus, says the Spirit of the Lord. You keep going, you keep going, you keep going, you keep going, you keep pressing, you keep living, you keep breathing, you keep prophesying, you keep praying, you keep preaching, you keep laying hands, you keep believing, says the Spirit of the Lord. Come on, wherever you are in your homes, receive the word of the Lord today. I'm gonna keep going. Keep going. I'm going to keep going. Come on, right there in your living room. I want you to take some steps forward. I want you to march. I want you to march around that living room. March around that bedroom. March around that house. I'm talking about keep going. And don't march in no circle. But walk straight out. Advance in your march. Move forward in your march. There's the spirit of the Lord.
you get some now faith and start walking around and decreeing and declaring, reminding God what he said that he would do for you. God, it ain't my responsibility to do it. I did not give the promise. You did it. So God, it's your responsibility to do it. And I know that you are not a man that you should lie. Neither are you the son of man that you should repent. But the very thing he has said to you, the Lord God, he will do it. The Lord God, he has done it. The Lord God, he has manifested it. The Lord God has made it alive to you. The Lord God, he breathed life into it. If God said it, that settles it in the name of Jesus. Come on, you ought to feel good about your faith today. Some of us need to walk out of some relationship. Walk out of some bad habits. Come on, here's some grace to do it. Some of us need to walk. Come on, come on, wherever you are, make an altar. Walk to that altar and give Christ your life. Now is the day of salvation. This is the acceptable year of the Lord's favor. And if you don't know him as your personal Lord and Savior, I dare you initiate the beginning of your faith by taking that walk and saying, God, you are Jesus, you are Lord of my life. And today I come surrendering and giving my all to you because I cannot make it. Come on, I dare you to give it to him today. You will see victory. We serve an awesome God, a mighty God. Mighty God. Mighty God. Such a mighty God. And I'm telling you, it ain't nothing like the journey, a journey with God, because uh, he ain't leaving us throughout all of this. I can remember saying that I'll never make it through some things. And I look over a couple minutes, and I'm still breathing, and I done made the past it. And we've got to have that same faith don't feel good but I know that I'm gonna make it through this because I serve an amazing God who sees me through all things Is that right come on if you believe that if you believe that put your hands together in that home in that car wherever you are give God a hand clap of praise because you know that he's gonna do what's up what's up fam hey listen I pray that you were blessed by the word of God today Man, Elder Demetria blessed our socks off, preaching a message from destination to destiny. Listen, remember, life is a journey and not a destination. So many of us have destination anxiety, worried about when I'm going to get there, when it's going to happen. Listen, put that in God's hand. He's got you step by step. He's going to see you through. Well, listen, today, um, if you uh, prayed that prayer of salvation and you got saved, we want to know about it. So inbox us. Or if you're here today and you'd like to join our church, we would love to have you be a part of Unity Christian Center so that we can grow together. Well, listen, let's just take this moment now to prepare our hearts and our minds to give and to uh, sow seed. And we can do that a few ways by visiting unitychristiancenter.org, click giving, and you can honor God that way safely and secure. You can visit paypal.me, uh, Unity Christian Center, and honor the Lord that way, or cash app Unity Christian Center. And then we've got our new text to give, y'all. I'm so excited about that. I hope that you're integrating and moving over to the new push pay system. Uh, you can type in the code word Unity CC Give to 77977 and give to God that way. Hey, listen, we want you to know Lady Mix and I are praying for you. We love you. Listen, we're giving you a big old air hug, man. We can't wait till we get past all of this and can connect with you guys uh, again. We're praying for you. We love you and can't wait to see you soon.